I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what I do for SMARC. I'm a research engineer at BMRL, and I work mostly on robotic perception for AUVs and ASVs uh, for navigation and mapping, for underwater navigation and mapping. So let's kick it off. So just as a quick uh, background on how the pipeline for uh, designing and developing an autonomous mobile robot uh, looks like, uh, well, it looks something like this. Uh, you have the real world environment and the first thing to, uh, the first line of defense or the, the first step on the pipeline is the perception, which is mostly what uh, I'm going to be talking about, which is interfacing and integrating the sensors, sensing. Uh, then we have all the raw data and from the, that raw data, we have to extract meaningful data. So meaningful information, sorry, high level uh, information about our surroundings from that sensor data. And with that uh, information, then we can localize, we can build maps and we can navigate through them. And we're not gonna talk about like cognition, path planning, execution or control, just this, this uh, left side of the perception. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, multi-beam echo sounders. Uh, I've worked uh, with these two uh, echo sounders that you see on the right, the Oculus multi-beam and uh, the Artisonic, the recent one uh, on Lolo. So for underwater and surface vehicles, uh, you cannot use conventional sensors, right? Uh, the convention, they're commonly used by uh, mobile robots on, on ground or on air. So you cannot use LIDARs, you can not use optical cameras because well, it, they won't perform well in underwater conditions. Uh, so AUVs rely on acoustic measurements uh, with like the echo sounders, like the sonars. Uh, but they require a lot of work uh, to deploy, right? You have to develop a lot of software and you have to uh, verify that the software works um, because uh, AUVs is, uh, and robotics, underwater robotics is not, uh, there's not a huge community like for example on drones and on cars and rovers and other smaller uh, uh, mobile robots there's not a lot of support from for example the ROS community the robotic operating system community so you don't get drivers for example for the r sonic for the oculus for a lot of the sensors that we use underwater the USBL and that so it, there's no like open source software that you can just plug and play with your uh, with the AUVs and of course we don't want to use the the, the one the manufacturers use because they run on Windows or something like that and our AUVs don't run on Windows and then uh, you have to do a lot of hardware interfacing so you have to mount it. You have to solder cables, you have to pot cables, and you have to do a lot of that hard work. And then, of course, you have to calibrate it. That's really important if you want to get the best uh, accuracy, the best performance uh, from your sensors. And then you do the final integration, you tune, you test and test and test and test until they work robustly with your AUV. So a little bit, uh, so this is the table of contents. I'm going to talk about the, the work I've done with the Oculus. Uh, multi-beam echo sounder, uh, which is a forward-looking sonar, and then the Artusonic multi-beam echo sounder, that's the one for bathymetric uh, surveying. So I'll explain the difference in a bit, and then some future work on both of these. So for the Oculus uh, M750B, this one is an imaging multi-beam echo sounder. What does imaging mean? Uh, it just gives you an image, a polar image of the seafloor or whatever your target is, like here on the right. So you have to be able to interpret these images in order to extract meaningful data from them. And you have to understand how the image formation works so that you can pinpoint the location of every pixel on the, on the image. So it requires a lot of work. Uh, the reason we got to use this uh, multi-beam is because they're cheap compared to uh, bathymetric survey multi-beam sounders. 
and they're small and they're low power. So uh, this was a project done for Nina Kirchner at the uh, Stockholm University uh, that was meant to go on an ASV for uh, glacier mapping, glacier front mapping underwater. So what we did was first develop the whole low level software. So interface, the sonar, the, uh, yeah, the Oculus with ROS so that we can run it with our computers. So we got this, this is a, a, an image of this scene. And, and we, we then are able to process all the data and abstract whatever we need to, uh, to build a tree reconstruction. So for my thesis uh, on acoustic inertial uh, uh, slam, basically at the sonar slam, we build the high level software for this sonar on top of the low level one that we had already developed. So we developed feature extraction uh, using AK's features. Uh, we just uh, did some ransack uh, based outlier detection and we used AK's features because uh, they're really sturdy when it comes to these nonlinear uh, scale spaces that the sonar are working on, sonar images work on, and we got pretty good results. And then from these uh, features that we extract from consecutive images, we're able to process uh, high level information. Uh, I'm not gonna get into detail with this, but using factor graphs and uh, we optimize for the relative position between those two frames where we took, uh, where we found the same features. And that's uh, what was done for, for my thesis. Uh, and then of course, we, we have to build uh, a hardware rig, a testing rig, and we have to verify that everything is working and we have to calibrate. So what we did, it, it was like this glorified uh, hockey stick that we called, we put the sonar on the bottom and on top, so, so it would be sticking out of the water and we didn't have to waterproof it, was an IMU. And it's a, a rigid, uh, how do you say, uh, a rigid mount, right? from the sonar to the IMU. To calibrate the relative position between those two, we used the motion capture system inside of the Smart Mobility Lab uh, here at KTH as well. And we got like millimeter accurate uh, calibration between the center of the IMU to the acoustical center of the, of the Oculus. Then we put the scene that you saw in the, in the and the images before with the chassis, this with the chassis and the beams. So we can capture it with the sonar and then extract features and try to recover that 3D position of the features that we're seeing. And if we can, if we can track that relative position, then our hypothesis was that we would be able to do a 3D reconstruction with those features that we were capturing. So then we verified that everything, if everything worked. So we put uh, some Maruco markers on the, on the window here outside the lab in the uh, next to the test tank that we could track with a camera on top that we also calibrated with the motion capture system. That's why it has this reflective tag on the top, uh, which g gave us a pretty accurate uh, ground truth measurement of how the hockey stick was moving uh, so we went uh, for a couple of labs around the, the test tank, uh, looking at the Aruko markers. And then we have here uh, some results of what we got. Uh, this is the, the blue line here with, that you see with the arrows is the recovered one. The green is the, the ground truth. Uh, the red is that reckoning, but we're not actually using that one. We're only fusing it. Um, so you see that we have like somewhat of the shape that's as good as we can get the the just two view bundle adjustment bundle uh, well two view optimization that we were doing and of course we did a 3d reconstruction but since it was so noisy inside the test tank uh, we couldn't get we sometimes detected features outside of the uh, of the test tank because of the echoes. So we really didn't get 
as good results as we were expecting. But this is an example of how the 3D reconstruction looks like in simulation that we did before we run all these experiments. And this is the this is a scene of a boat that was in gazebo in a gazebo simulation. And all these spots are the features that we matched uh, through consecutive um, images. So uh, then a version of this software is going hopefully with the, with the help of the ANCA team to Svalbard in August. And uh, we're gonna put another multi-beam uh, that's gonna be looking at the glaciers, but it's some, some version of this software that we developed for the thesis. Uh, it's gonna go uh, on ANCA with the Oculus as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the R2 Sonic. So the R2 Sonic is a much better, well, I wouldn't say better sensor, but it's different. I like it much better. Um, this one is a bathymetric uh, surveying multi beam echo sounder. So it gives you uh, a line of pings that tell you where the seafloor is or whatever it, it is that you're pointing towards with the multi beam. So, of course, uh, the same story. We had to develop low level software. So, since this multi beam, uh, it's also used, uh, we wanted to use first. Uh, as we want it to be user friendly so that one user, one uh, operator can uh, look at the screen, see how it looks like, and then toggle throughout all the settings that it had in order to find the best ones to, to do some uh, surveying, right? So we developed the software also on ROS that was able to interface with the sonar and the SIM stack uh, to change all of the uh, settings on it. So here you can see how the acoustic image looks like from the sonar, and this is how the bathymetry, bathymetry that it's extracting from, from the measurements. Then, of course, we, we said, let's, let's go test this software, and we put it on ANCA uh, a little bit uh, with more sensors than the last image. Um, and you can see here, we did some lawn, lawnmower pattern on Brooms Weekend to get some some data, get some, uh, uh, we'll verify that the software was working as intended. And it was, uh, we had a problem with our uh, IMU with the inertial measurement unit. So we couldn't get rolling pitch stabilization and it was a really windy day. So you can see all these curves here when the, where the ASV was pitching and rolling. But we still got like a broad overview that the the sensor was working and the software was working fine. So then we said, okay, let's put it on Lolo. So with help, of course, of the Lolo team, we put it on Lolo and we did a thorough calibration of its of the position of the multi-beam with respect to the IMU, because the multi-beam is on the front, but the IMU is all the way in the back of Lolo. So with help of the Lolo team and uh, Marcus Hook from FMB, we used a, a total station to survey uh, the chassis and all of the points of interest, that, of interest that we wanted from Lolo to get a relative position of all of those points with respect to whatever we wanted, in this case, the IMU. And then we put on Lolo and we went out to Wagens uh, last week to get some Good data. Uh, we still had some problems where noise, uh, we got some noisy measurements when we were at a certain depth, when mapping at a certain depth, but overall uh, we realized that everything was working as intended. Uh, this is the mission that we ran with Lolo and you can see here there's like a uh, like an underwater hill, I don't know what's it called, and this is this place right here. Uh, it looks a little bit sparse because this was plotted when we had connection with Lolo and if it went underwater, which it did uh, a couple of times, we lost connection so we couldn't plot all of that data anymore. But here you can see like a live view of how it's, how it's plotting the data. I think this is like accelerated by 10 times or something like that. And then down here, you have a smaller snippet of how the mapping looked like 
you, you can see the rocks, you can see the, the backscatter as well, the backscatter intensity. And yeah, that's how it looks like on Lolo right now. Good. So for future work, uh, what we're going to do is to have advanced functionalities of the multi-beam. Right now, it, it has um, limited functionalities. Uh, it's just working with the basic functions that we could get. Uh, but it has a lot of different features that we can use, like multi multispectral uh, surveying, and we can do some a lot of things automatically. But we haven't enabled those. So a robust and advanced functionality for Lolo and the multi-beam is one of the next steps. And also, I'm collaborating with Ignacio Torroba, also from uh, from all, from RPL. Uh, implementing his solution for a, part a bathymetric particle filter localization uh, using Gaussian processes, which is pretty cool. It's, this is a simulator he made uh, down here. Um, so we we want to run Lolo with that particle filter. And then we want to increase, obviously, uh, collaboration with Stockholm University, the Baltic Sea Center, on doing automatic mapping of the glacier fronts uh, and other things, of course, uh, with AUVs and ASVs uh, like ANCA. And I think that was it. Uh, thank you so much.